Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and I'm really happy you clicked on this video because we're going to be talking about AI and AI is a technology that's growing rapidly and now is a great time to get into it and most people aren't aware about the technology and how it works so I'm here to help you get into the field so uh, this is a collab video and Hamad Sheikh from Empiricist Academy is going to tell you what machine learning is so I hope you enjoyed the video and let's get into it thanks Sheikh for the introduction hi there I'm Hamad from Empiricist Academy and what I'm going to be doing today is telling you what is machine learning now before I get into machine learning I want to talk about some other terms that are often interchangeably used and uh, when I was starting off with machine learning last year, this was often quite confusing to me. How does machine learning differ from these other terms such as artificial intelligence, neural networks, and deep learning? So we're going to go over these four terms first. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to go over is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is very broad. What we're doing with AI is we're allowing the computer to think and make decisions. And one form of artificial intelligence is rule-based artificial intelligence. So rule-based artificial intelligence, what do I mean by that? With rule-based artificial intelligence, you're programming in rules into the computer, and the, and the computer uses the rules and instructions to make decisions. So let's see an example of this. So let's look at this chess engine right here. So this is a very popular stockfish chess engine. Now if I make a move, so if I move uh, this pawn from E2 to E3, then you see this chess engine responded, the chess engine moved this pawn from E7 to E6. How did it know to do that? How did this chess engine, this computer, know to make this move out of the many moves that are available to it? So this chess engine is using a brute force search. It's searching over hundreds of thousands of moves and is picking the one that's going to result in the best board position for the computer. So that's essentially what it does and this is an example of artificial intelligence. The newer and exciting form of artificial intelligence is algorithm-based artificial intelligence, which is known as machine learning. And machine learning is a subfield of artificial intelligence. And what machine learning is, machine learning essentially consists of a whole bunch of algorithms that learn to recognize patterns in the data without being explicitly told what to look for from the programmer. There are many machine learning algorithms out there. And one of the most popular machine learning algorithms is known as a neural network. And neural networks, they differ in their capability and size, and there are many different types of neural networks. And the field that studies neural network is known as deep learning. And deep learning is a subfield of machine learning. And deep learning consists of many different types of neural network. So that's essentially what these different terms mean and how they relate. So let's look at an example of deep learning in action. So here I have a handwritten digit recognition a program. So what this is going to do is given some handwriting, so let me write in some digit like three, it's going to use deep learning to be able to recognize what this digit is. Well, it, got, it was able to get the correct prediction for me writing three. Now let me write in two. Recognize. Okay, so it estimates that what I've written is a two. Let's do one more and let's do a seven. And when I click recognize, it gets it correct again, seven. So this software here is not using rule-based artificial intelligence, but rather it's using deep learning. And uh, let me give you an idea of what it's essentially doing. So what deep learning is very good at doing is approximating functions. So remember, a function has some input space, x, and it maps the inputs to some outcome, y. So in our case, the handwriting digit recognition software we saw, there the inputs are the pixels that we are writing. So this is just pixels on the square that we are allowed to write on. Given these input pixels, we want to map this input into the output of the digit. And the digit can be from 0, 1, 2, all the way till 9. Now, deep learning is very good at approximating functions. And you can imagine, if you're able to approximate this function, we can use it to do digit recognition. We give the pixel inputs of the image, 
and it's able to use those pixels and recognize the patterns in the data and figure out whether the digit that's written is a 0, 1, 2, or a 9. So artificial intelligence is any form of computer intelligence. Then a subfield of artificial intelligence is machine learning. Within machine learning, we have deep learning, which explores the many different types of neural networks. What's going on guys? It's Daniel Burke here, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you in 90 seconds or less where, where machine learning is being used right now. Actually, it's probably closer than you think. The device you're watching this on, whether it's a smartphone or a computer or a laptop or an iPad or something like that, probably uses some sort of machine learning technique to manage its battery usage. Now, what, what's that? Well, the devices that we use every day collect a lot of data. And within that data, there are patterns, usage patterns for the case of a smartphone or, or a computer or something like that. And those usage patterns can be used over time, collected over time and figured out how to most efficiently deliver power to your device. So uh, rather than your device running out of battery quicker, it lasts longer. Where else can machine learning be used or where else is it already being used? Because it's in every single industry. Healthcare, analyzing healthcare records to work out which treatment will be best for, for a number of different people. Booking a plane flight, going online and searching all the websites that, that have the best plane prices at the best time, that's machine learning as well. Or managing cooling and heating systems. Google reduced their power bill by 40% using machine learning techniques to figure out more efficient strategies to cool their data centers. Machine learning has been around for decades and it's, 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 it's more than likely in everything that you use, every piece of technology, well, well, it's going to be in every piece of technology that you use going forward. It's becoming more and more prevalent. That's why it's such an exciting time to get into the field. So start learning machine learning and realize it's probably a bit closer than you think. So I'm going to show you guys a neural network that is going to be able to map true or false values to its x or values. So the first thing you're going to do is going to convert this data set into two matrices. Uh, so um, a matrix is just a group of numbers and they're in the shape of number of examples by number of nodes or features. Uh, in this case we have two nodes or features. Then you need to matrix multiply this matrix of true or false values with another matrix filled with random values. So the numbers in this matrix are called weights. And then uh, you get a matrix with the shape of Y, which is 3 by 1. Now what you do is you optimize these weights using an algorithm called gradient descent till you get the correct result. So the idea is after you get the resulted matrix close or equal to Y by updating these weights, they collect and store some patterns from the dataset. And then what you can do is you can use those patterns to predict the XOR value for a completely new example that the neural network hasn't seen before. So you're going to define your model using the sequential function which allows us to feed the data into the neural network sequentially and then you use the dense function to create the nodes and also to create the weights between the nodes for the neural network. Um, so first we're going to create a dense layer of three nodes and the number of input nodes or the features is 2 so we pass that as an argument um, and then we create an output layer of one node so the next step is to train our model which is optimizing these weights using gradient descent so what you do till now is design the network and then now you fit the data into the model meaning you feed the data in, into the neural network exactly the way you define your model. And then what you do is you finally predict XOR value for a new example. In this case we have 0, 1 
So we feed that through the network and do some matrix multiply with those weights um, and then get the XOR value. So as you can see, we have got the XOR value that we have expected. It's okay if you don't completely understand it. I didn't want you to take so much at a time and get confused, so I skipped most of the details of it. So in my next video, I'm going to go in detail with gradient descent and also build a neural network that is going to be able to classify handwritten digits. So subscribe for more tutorials and I promise you won't regret it. Try